we had something like this happen, didn't we? Just like this happened on Sunday morning. It was just the same thing, wasn't it, Andy? But the Lord wanted me to minister. So I preached on hell. I'm thinking, Lord, there isn't a soul here that needs to get saved. So I, I kind of, you know, you, you feel by the Spirit. You say, well, we'll add just a little bit something here that uh, nobody should go to hell, so you ought to help people not go to hell, and that's why I'm preaching on hell. But after the message was over with, I had a lady come up to me. Hallelujah. And she said she has struggled all her life since she got saved as a child with the idea that she was going to go to hell because she was going to sin and not be ready if she died. She was afraid that at any moment she could sin and because she was in sin she wouldn't, she wouldn't go to heaven. And something that I said in that passage, something that I said in the message clicked with her and she said it was the final piece of the puzzle. This woman had been to counseling with pastors on this. She had a fear that had gripped her, but God set her free. Amen. And I'm going, what? That, you know, praise you, Jesus. I mean, how does that happen? I, I got saved on, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask a God who gives liberally without rebuke. I read that scripture, and all of a sudden I had a revelation that I was stupid. Seriously. And if I wanted wisdom, then I needed to get it from God, and that's what caused me to turn to God. Sometimes we don't know, but how come when we have asked Jesus to be our Savior, when we've got him in our lives, we don't stay in the shade? Why don't we stay in the cool? You know, God walked in the garden in the cool of the evening with Adam and Eve. He wants to walk with us the way he did with them. That was before the fig leaves. That was before people worried about whether they had sin in their lives. That was before stuff like that happened. He wants us to come back to that. The second Adam has come and has brought us back into a relationship with Jesus, when we know him as our Savior, that we can have that same closeness that Adam and Eve had with God. The curse has been broken, and we are new creatures in Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fire at night, the cloud by day. Man, these guys were in the wilderness. Sometimes we're in the wilderness. Amen. Sometimes we're in a place that seems solitary. Sometimes we're in a place that isn't, it isn't a pleasant place. But God's there. He's protecting us, and he's keeping us. We don't have to get into fear. We don't have to get into worry. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, the right hand of strength. God is the one who does it. You know, some people trust in all kinds of things. I, I knew a guy one time, he trusted in communion. He was from a liturgical religious background, and if he didn't get to church on Sunday mornings and have communion, he was going to have a bad week. He was trusting in communion. He wasn't trusting in the Lord. His communion with the Lord uh, was all based upon the ritual, not upon the relationship. I want the relationship. Amen? I want that peace. I, I mean, I love communion. Communion's great. Receiving communion, having the sacraments, there's nothing, you know, that's an awesome time. Great time to get right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes when we take communion, we focus on the wrong thing. You know, the Bible tells us, you know, that we ought to examine ourselves to make sure that we eat worthy. So we sit there and think about all the things we haven't done. But the Bible tells us that we do this not only to memorialize what he has done, but to recognize the fact that he's coming again. Our focus isn't even supposed to be on us. Yeah, you check yourself out, but the focus is supposed to be on him, amen? It's supposed to be on what he's doing and what he can do and the power that he can bring to our lives. It's not supposed to be on our sins and those things. Just 1 John 1, 9. If we confess and repent, he's faithful to forgive us, amen? Operate according to the scriptures. He preserves you from all evil except for what? Nobody can say anything, nothing, because it, it's all evil. But for what is it? How come it is that we allow the enemy to attack us and say that he can, well, yeah, he can keep me from all this, but not that. This one thing, this one thing's got power here. It doesn't have power. God has power. Amen? God alone has power. Everything else has, has a semblance of power. Amen? It's sort of like religion. 
which seems to have a form of godliness but denies the power thereof. The enemy claims to have power, and there's no semblance of religion sometimes, but there's no power there either. We have to focus on the one thing that we know. We know that he will not allow your foot to be moved. He will not allow your foot to be moved. When you've done all you can do to stand, you stand some more. If the enemy's attacking, you don't back down. There isn't, there isn't retreat in his, in his uh, battle cry. Amen? Amen. 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 There's not. The, the only time that they retreated was when they were sucking the people out <laughs> so that they could knock them down. It was a trap that they were laying. Amen? Hallelujah. The enemy is a liar. He's going to preserve your going out and your coming in. That means whichever way you're going. Hallelujah? Amen. You're going out and you're coming in. And it's going to happen from this time forth and forevermore. I want to be one of those people who hang on to those things and not forget them. Now, are there times when you forget them? Yes, I'm afraid so. The phone call at 3 o'clock in the morning. That one never sounds good. And usually it's somebody going, hey, is Tom there? And you're going, Tom, who? What are you talking about? Wrong number. You know what I'm talking about. Pastor, the pastor knows what I'm talking about. We, uh, we get these calls sometimes, and they're out of their head. Well, Sometimes they actually want us, and sometimes they don't. They don't even know who they're calling. What, what about when you look at the checkbook? That one will get to you, won't it? You look at the, you look at the thing that isn't there. It isn't what the enemy is doing. It's what, what's, what doesn't seem to be happening. How I many you know he will not allow our foot to be moved? He will not stop it. He will not stop it. The enemy will not stop us, rather, from anything that God has planned. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. He will deliver them out of them all. But personally, I want to stay out of afflictions. Amen. <laughs> and anytime I can stay in the shade instead of getting out in the heat, why not? Why not cling close to him? How many of you feel that way tonight? Yeah. Amen. How many, how many of you want to do that? Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet then? Praise God. You know, we have no agenda tonight. We have no... We don't care whether, whether Brother Graham gets to speak. By the way, uh, this is Graham and Linda Renoff from New Zealand. <laughs> and they just drop by tonight, and if they get to speak, who cares? You know, that's great. And if they don't, we don't care. Hallelujah. His buddy, his buddy Michael spent the whole evening in the floor the time our morning, and when he was here the first time, <laughs> ah, we don't care. Hallelujah. Now, if he's got something to share, he can. But why don't we uh, sing something, Austin and Joanna? Or Joanna, or Austin, or whoever, whichever one of you is, is doing it. Hallelujah. Do what? Anybody who can. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory Enjoy to your name. Noise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. Lord, I thank you even now as we begin to praise you again. Lord, that we'll be mindful of the fact that you are a God that keeps us. You are a God that preserves us. You are a God that, that allows us to stand when it seems like the enemy is going to knock us down. We thank you tonight. We are protected and blessed. And Lord, if we're in a battle right now, you're going to bring us through. We thank you that you are our deliverer. We praise you tonight for it in Jesus' name. But I can remember last time I was here. And I remember praying for you and saying that there was that you had a gift of healing and that the rivers would begin to flow. God's just going to take it up a notch or two or three or four even. <laughs> but I just felt that these, the river is about to deepen and the river's about to get wider. And the impact of that river is going to begin to sweep through a city it's going to begin to sweep see the, the Bible talks of us being the city of God okay and I'm going to anoint you Lynn come and hold the mic for me because you're going to begin to see an increase 
of the river of God flowing out of here. You're going to be a sign and you're going to be a wonder as you demonstrate the goodness of God. And it's not going to flow just in the walls. It's going to begin to flow outside the walls. And one of the things that I want to encourage you in is that when you see people outside the walls of the church, just go and pray for them. And there'll be times when you'll anoint hankies and cloths and the testimony of God will begin to pull the strongholds down over the city, over the city, and over cities. You ready? First of all, I want to anoint your hands. Okay, and then I'm going to anoint your hair. Whoa! Father, shut! I, I, I'm not going to uh, preach, but I want to say a couple of things tonight. I was seeking the Lord. Lord whoa, I'm drunk. I was seeking the Lord earlier today. And I just felt Him um, draw my attention to the churches in Revelation. And there's one church that's called a faithful church. But, you know, all the churches were, were doing great things. And, you know, he said, I had this and that with you. But I want you tonight, when you get home or in the days that lie ahead, begin to read the promises of the overcomers. Because, see, you've been digging a well. And the well's about to just explode. It'll start. It's not going to be just in, in the church. It, it, what I believe God's going to do is begin to get the river to flow out. I mean, it's already flowing out, but you're about to see an increase. And you have the power of the resurrected Christ in each and every one of you. Each of you has a story of his faithfulness. Each of you has a story of his goodness, a testimony of faith. It doesn't matter how small it is, how little it is, but if you begin to just share that. You see, witnessing isn't about the four spiritual laws and having a scripture and, and having the right theology. Witnesses, witnessing and being light and soul is about you demonstrating the power of the kingdom out in the community. And it starts by you just, you know, sometimes, you know, when I greet somebody, I'll just go, hey, how are you doing? And what am I doing? I'm laying hands on them. They don't know it. And sometimes when I'm praying for them, you know, you, I, you just pray. And bit by bit, you'll start to gather up your stories. And as you tell the stories and the testimonies, the power of God is going to increase and be released through the community. It's coming. You know, He's the same God today as He was back in the old revivals and the new Hebridan revivals and Azuzu Street and the Welsh revival. And John G. Lake, Henrietta, Catherine Coleman, the same God. He's the same God today. And the New Hebridan revival, and the, uh, there was three of them, but around the, well, around, around the, um, 19, I think it was 1945, 1946, 47, there was just a group of people, a group of pastors and leaders about around about a dozen started to pray. They put their kids to bed in their homes and make sure the family was, you know, all right for the night. And at 10 o'clock at night, they'd go down to the local hall and they'd begin to pray. And it started, just, just started like a normal prayer meeting. And they'd just go and they'd pray for an hour and then they'd go home. But, you know, over the weeks, as they kept doing that, they were doing it three nights a week. The prayer meeting started to grow. And before long, they were praying through the night and it was effortless. And it was just, you know, like the prayer meeting in there, it's a cauldron of fire. I don't know how or where or what, but it's going to enlarge. You need to get a bigger room. You really do, because it's the engine room of the church. And God will do that because you've been faithful in the cry of your heart. There's a furnace in there, and it's not body heat. There's a furnace in the spirit realm that's about to pop. And see, one of the things that uh, John said in Revelation to the church of Ephesus was go back 
to what you first did in the beginning because you've lost your first love. You guys haven't lost your first love, but I just want to explain something. You've got to understand that the church of Ephesus was born out of revival. Go and read it in Acts 19. And Paul went into the temple and he preached for three months and he got sick of their religion and sick of arguing intellectually with them. And he went into the hall of Tyranus, which was a great um, big hall. And that's where all the Greece, Greek, Greek philosophers went and they were debating and stuff like that. And he had a move of God for two years and the church was born. He was sending hankies out and people were getting healed. And in that time of two years, the fame of Jesus spread throughout all of Asia. And the fame of Jesus is about to spread through your community. You cannot keep doing this and not have something happen. And you've got to understand who you are in Christ. You are not the tail. You are the head. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Your position is at the right hand of the Father in Jesus Christ. And it's time. You know, I know you're overcoming, but God wants to take you to a whole new level of overcoming. And you're faithful. And you keep digging. It doesn't matter what it looks like. But remember who you are. You pray from a heavenly realm, not from an earthly realm. You're not a beggar. And you speak the word. You begin to speak the word. And you'll see the word released. And and you'll see the word activated in your community. And it'll start with just people getting healed out there. I've had some of the greatest miracles in the world happen. Just as many as in church. And some of them aren't even saved yet, but the seed of the kingdom's been planted in them. And little by little, they're starting to trickle in because they know God's real. They've had an encounter. And this fire that you've been stirring up is about to explode, not just in the church. It's exploding in here. It's going to explode out there. And ask the Holy Spirit how you're to talk with people. He'll teach you. It's not some religious formula. Just be yourself because God has a treasure inside of each and every one of you. And who you are and the gifts that you have can touch another person as you learn to flow out of those giftings and the talents that God has given you. Given you. It's scary sometimes. I remember the first time I ever used the gift of prophecy outside the walls of the church. In fact, I didn't know I even could. And I was a pastor. And this lady walked in the coffee bar. And I looked at her and I knew that I was going to go and speak to her and her daughter. And they walked past the table and down to the back of the cafe. And and, and I'm going, how do I do this? And the Lord said to me, I want you to go and tell her that God loves her. And I'm going, no, you don't. That's daft. That's going to sound dumb. And I went silent, and I was with a group of pastors, and we were just meeting, having coffee, and talking about Jesus, and I went quiet. And one of the guys turned around and said, what's up? And I said, oh, I've just been having this discussion with God, and I told him, and he said, I knew something was up. And I thought that what would happen is that when she got up off the table from where she was eating, and she walked out of the shop, that I'd just sort of get up my my chair and step in front of you and go, hi, Jesus loves you or something, you know? But oh no, as soon as I yielded to what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do, I found myself walking towards her and I'm standing in front of a table and it's too late. I can't go back. And so I didn't know what to say. So I I thought, "Um, excuse me, but I'm a pastor. I thought that might count for something, you know, and she wouldn't thought that she wouldn't have thought that I was an idiot or something. And I said, look, I'm pastor in the town and, and um, I just felt God wanted to tell you that Jesus loves you. And instantly the tears, she just broke and started to cry. She pulled her chair out and I sat down and started talking to the daughter and her. And within a very short time, she ended up in church. They got saved. You see, that's... You just sometimes you bumble your way through it, but you have something more powerful inside of you than any weapon that is known to man. Any weapon that is known to man, you have something more powerful. It's the same power that rose Jesus from the dead, and each and every one of us as Christians carry that. You know, it could be just a smile or a kind word it'll start with. 
And, and if you're shy, just when you see your neighbor sick, just be secret center and anoint a hanky and pop it in, the, in an envelope and say, hey, I, this is for you. Just stick it in your pillowcase and let's see what God does. Maybe you've got to start that way. I don't know. God will lead you. But this thing is about to pop. And you don't ever, ever be talked in to not doing church the way you do church. This is awesome. You, something's changed. Like, what, it's a year, 18 months? And you guys have been faithful. And this, 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 this fire thing's here. And the things that you've been crying out for, you've got to see God do outside the walls and in your families. So I want you all to stand. Okay, and I want you all to come at the front because I felt to just do an activation. <laughs> can, can, I want my glasses for a minute. I can't see. Just, I'm going to read just one little piece of scripture. Wow. And this goes for everybody that's got instruments. You can yeah, keep playing on the keyboard. You'll get the same dose of the Holy Ghost as everybody else, man. You know, there's people been watching you. The, commu- the community's been watching you. You know, there's got to, there's just got to be an absolute flow. But you, the flow will only come as you step out, okay? Here we go. Revelation 3, verse 7. And this is a letter to the faithful church. And I felt the Lord say, you're a faithful church. These things, says he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, I know your works. See, if I, see, I have set before you an open door. And I believe that there's an open door. You know, you might not see it, you might not feel it, it might not look like it, but there's an open door. And God's asking you to just step through. That open door could look like anything. It could look like suddenly you have a conversation with your neighbor and you've hardly ever talked to her or him. Or suddenly you might meet somebody in the street and... You start to talk, and they start to bear their heart. You know, look for the open doors and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to see them. And no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. Have kept my word and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. And to know what I have loved you. Because you have kept my command, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name. You have a new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You know, we look at our world and it's falling apart, isn't it? But God said the Spirit of